Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So, I took some of you up on your advice and I went out and I got myself a kitten. Oh Lord, love a duck. She completely schmooed me. I went to the pet store. I found out they had one kitten left. Listen to this. The, uh, one of the town's two police officers found a cage with eight tiny little kittens in it at the end of a snow-covered road that nobody uses. Thank God he went down there, probably to have his coffee break, which he's completely entitled to. But anyways, this kitten literally fell asleep in my arms two seconds after I picked her up. I thought, oh, okay, this this little sweetheart's for me. She terrorized me last night. I woke up to her literally playing tug-of-war with my nose ring, literally trying to remove the ring from the side of my nose. So I gently pushed her away or moved her away. I fell back asleep, and I wake up to her batting my earrings because I had long dangly earrings on. And then at the same time, she would stick her whole nose in my eardrum. Then she would breathe heavily and purr at the same time. I just couldn't help myself after that. It was tickling so much that I was literally laughing in my sleep. So that was it. I got up, I sat in my office and watched videos for, I don't know, an hour or two. So I'm really super tired right now. But can any of you guess what I named her? I bet you you can't. So I'll just tell you anyways. I named her Little Sabe. And you know what? She already knows her name. She comes running. Every time she hears Little Sabe, she comes running. Oh, I better answer this because I know you're going to ask. No, I have not introduced her to Bella yet. Uh, I tried and it didn't go so well. I never knew that Bella could growl like a dog. She was hissing and growling. Back hair was up. And yeah, that didn't go over so well. So I've kept them separate. I keep bringing uh, little Sabe out every now and again. And I show Bella, you know, this is a baby. And, and there's Bella's having none of it. So anyways, I'll work at it. I'll, I'll, I'll get it figured out. I'm not worried about it. But let's hope that the little mouse situation gets taken care of. You know, I, I'm happy to live with the little critters. I just don't want to see them. And I don't want them in my kitchen all over my stuff. You know, I get it. This is the life I chose. I choose to live, you know, in the country. These things happen in wintertime. I get it. But in my opinion, you, you just shouldn't have to see them. So the whole thing is that maybe when they think there's a cat that's going to, you know, get them, they'll just stay away. Now, I really hope that she doesn't get them because I, I don't want to see that. Ooh, I don't want to see that either. Okay, enough of the jibber jabber. So this story was sent in by a gentleman that goes by the name of Cameraman. He sent us in a story quite a while back, um, but I can't recall the episode. So I've reached out to him to see if he could uh, recall it and then let me know. So if he does, I'll add it at the end and you guys can go check it out if you want. But he's also been sending me some of his very amazing photography. So as I'm reading, his story, I'm going to be uploading his pictures for your enjoyment. Okay, guys, on with the story. Okay, hi, Leslie, it's Cameraman again. Sorry it's taken me a while to write back, but I had to wait until my friend was out of the hospital before I could talk to him about sending you his story. After he listened to your podcast and seeing that you care about your listeners, He's agreed to let me tell you our story. 
This was in November of 1991, just about 15 miles from where I had my first experience. Rick and I got permission to hunt on an old farm that belonged to a family friend of his. The farm had no one living there for years, but the family did use the field in the old apple orchard to hunt deer on. We were told there were two homemade deer stands and where they were located. One was located in the lower right corner of the field and the other in the upper left corner. I lost the coin toss and got the lower one because it was not next to the apple orchard. It was still just before sunrise and just enough light to walk to the stands on the crisp autumn morning. I was the first one to get to my stand and Rick joked, I hope you have a good nap because nothing's going to come down here because they'll be up by me eating from the apple orchard. Oh, I will, I laughed. I climbed up and got everything the way I like it and as I watched Rick, walked to the upper left-hand field. I could barely see his blazing orange vest and hat as he climbed into his tree stand. I turned to watch the field as he was to cover the apple orchard from his tree stand. The rest of this story is from Rick and what he told me from when he got to his tree stand. When he climbed the tree stand and got settled in, he started looking over the apple orchard as the sun was coming up. He said he noticed something in the tree with its back to him. It was hunched on its knees with its long brown hairy arms and no visible neck. At first glance, he thought to himself that it was a black bear in the tree. But black bears do not have hands. But with it still being a little dark and whatever, it was looking the other way, Rick said. He was just looking around the orchard. He watched the black figure in the apple tree, but the figure didn't see him. Just as the sun came up, Rick said he could hear the leaves start to rustle on the ground in the orchard, and he was watching the black figure in the tree be very still and waited to see what was making the rustling noise in the leaves. It had been about five minutes when a doe and yearling came into view. Rick could see, and since he didn't have an any deer permit, he just watched. The black figure seemed to also watch the doe and yearling approach. As the deer approached the nearby apple tree, where the big black figure was, they started to feed on the apples on the ground. Rick said he had a sense that this figure was also hunting and these two deer were about to be its prey. Rick noticed there were some small sticks in the tree stand, and without thinking, he said he threw the sticks out in front of the deer, which spooked them and made them run into the field. Rick then looked at the figure in the tree, and then it looked right at him. In his head, he thought he heard a voice say, You cost me food. The expression on the creature's face was not friendly. Teeth were showing and Rick raised his rifle in case the creature was going to come for him. He, had, he may have only had an over and under, which is a 20 gauge loaded with buckshot on the bottom and a 30-30 on top, hoping that it would do. Rick recalled the eyes of the creature were brown with no whites around them like a human eyes. They seemed to be sunken in, and the nose seemed to be flattened out with skin like leather around the face, and the face was not covered with hair. The creature jumped down from the apple tree and came to the tree where the tree stand was. Since the tree stand was only about ten feet off the ground, built into the old oak tree, the creature's head hit the bottom of the tree stand. The tree started to shake violently back and forth. Rick stood up in his tree stand and took off his orange hunting vest and started waving it towards me. I could see him waving the orange vest. I could see that the tree was shaking, but I couldn't see what was causing the tree to shake. 
as there was no wind blowing. I used the scope of my rifle to look towards Rick's tree stand, and I saw the big hand grasping the tree. Still looking through the scope, I saw a head peek out from the side of the tree briefly. I knew I had to help my friend in some way. I knew my rifle was only lined up for 150 yards accurately. I did have a homemade deer call, which my dad made for me. And I still have this. A rubber band was stretched between two one-inch cedar pieces with duct tape on the ends. It sounds like a deer blowing. I thought I would get the Bigfoot's attention, hoping Rick could get down from the tree stand and get away. I got out of my tree stand and got on the ground. Then I blew the call three times and waited for a short time. I saw the tree stop shaking, and then I saw the head peek around the tree again. I blew the call again, and I watched as the Bigfoot started moving towards where I was. I was just wanting Rick to get out of the tree stand. Rick finally got out and was watching the Bigfoot move towards where I was. I raised my rifle and I took aim through the scope at the Bigfoot and I took a shot in front of it. I didn't want to hurt it. I only wanted it to leave so Rick could get out of there. The Bigfoot stopped and looked at me and I heard a shot from behind the Bigfoot. Rick had stopped and shot the ground next to the Bigfoot, but made the Bigfoot move towards the woods, and I heard branches breaking, and I started towards the car. Rick started the other way to the car. I was sort of looking over my shoulder, walking very fast, hoping the creature was not going to show up again. The ten-minute walk felt like thirty minutes, but when I got to the car, Rick was there waiting for me. Rick was pale as we drove off the old farm down the road. We didn't say much until we stopped at a small store to get a soda. He asked if we should tell anyone. I said, who would believe two teens hunting? They would say it was a black bear. There was no black bear and we both knew what we saw. But I know you're right, he responded. Thirty-one years later... They're going to take that old farmhouse and put up a new house in its place in 2023. Makes me wonder if the creature is still in that area. I have not been up there since. Happy holidays, cameraman. Well, honestly, dear, I can't say that I blame you. Um, yeah, you, you're best to try to avoid areas that you know definitely have Bigfoot in them. You don't want to tempt fate. That's my... Total opinion. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do me a favor. You know the drill. Hit the bell. Hit the thumbs up. And subscribe. Okay, guys, you know I love ya. We'll see you back here in a day or two. Bye for now.